Good morning, everyone. My name is Rosemary Wardley. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am a cartographer and graphics editor at National Geographic. Um, I'm coming to you this morning, not live and not in person, but virtually from the traditional territory of the Nakpachank and Piscataway peoples, otherwise known as Washington, D.C. And while I'm not there in person, I will be on the Slack channel this morning for our TCD session, as well as throughout the rest of the conference. Um, I'm just giving a quick lightning talk today about um, a couple of maps that I made this year using a new perspective for me, 3D and the plan oblique. So my time is short, so let's dive right in. Uh, literally dive right in because this first project that I'm gonna talk to you about is following um, a map following um, photographer and biologist Laurent Belesta uh, and his team that spent 28 days underneath the Mediterranean Sea in a diving bell. So this is the finished map. Um, it's a 3D perspective map showing the bathymetry of the French Riviera. And let me talk to you a little bit about how we got to this map. This is um, the first tip that I want to share with you, of course, is not only for any kind of perspective maps you're making, any map really is you want to identify the important features of the map and the story that you're telling. And so for this map, we wanted to focus on the dive sites that Laurent and his team visited, as well as this uh, really unique um, area of the Mediterranean Sea where they were diving. It's the Bathio zone right off of the coast between Marseille and Monaco where the continental shelf dips deeply um, into the abyssal plain. So I'm uh, really looking forward to uh, Margot Carpenter, who's presenting in this session later on, talking about how, her tips for mapping underwater features. But we knew we really wanted to focus on this bathymetry. And so my second kind of tip was, um, if you don't have the strengths or the skills to kind of do that, which I have never done a um, 3D perspective for bathymetry, uh, find somebody who you can collaborate, who uh, can do that. And for this issue, uh, the May 2021 issue, we ended up focusing on the oceans. And we were already working with uh, relief artist Eric Knight. And you can see his other work here that was featured in that issue. And he is just phenomenal at rendering these beautiful scenes. So it kind of it made sense to work with him for this project as well and to uh, create kind of a cohesive look between the issue. So the next tip is one that Eric taught me, which is that when you're rendering these scenes, um, it's important to kind of just make the, the sketches pretty rough. Uh, you don't wanna be working with the full resolution data because that could take a lot of time to render the scene. And you also don't wanna have people focusing on the details of the render when in reality, what you're doing at the beginning is just kind of trying to line up the the, the correct pitch or the degrees that you rotate the scene and things like that. And so these are a couple of visions, uh, a couple of sketches that Eric and I passed back and forth early on. And by having these kind of really rough sketches, we were able to make it so that when he finally ran a test render, um, it actually is looking pretty close to the finished product, which was nice. So that allowed us to get a lot of the um, important stuff figured out at the beginning. After that, um, it was on to me to start laying on a lot of the type compilation. So when you're doing um, a relief uh, or a perspective map that has uh, a busy background, you know that it's going to be imperative that you have good type legibility, um, but you also don't want to overcrowd the scene with type. So I tried to get in um, as much of what I thought we were going to want to include early on to just see how it was all playing together. After that, um, it was just a matter of refining the details. Here we added it, and one of my favorite things was this aquarium cutaway to really give the reader the, the feel that they were diving into this map. Um, other little things that you start to see here are, um, we were working on the colors that, for the, the land, the urban areas, um, kind of refining some of the type. And then um, this is the finished map where you can see we added in uh, some drop shadows to the water labels to kind of make them look like they're floating. We really pushed back that urban area on land. Um, we highlighted the dive sites and um, also added in a little bit of an ocean ripple to give that effect. And I think it worked pretty well. Um, the second map that I'm going to be talking about um, is first, uh, includes a couple of firsts for me. This was a story 
about an archaeological dig in a landfill in Catalonia. So mapping a garbage dump was definitely something I had never done before. And we also used the plan oblique relief perspective for this um, project, which was a first for me. So this is again the finished product and how we got here. This map um, was in the July 2021 issue. Um, sort of starting in the same, the same step, we identified what was important. And for this map, we wanted to really highlight that not only the, the location of the landfill, but also the physical geography that surrounded it. That's really, when talking to the experts, what they said was, you know, what made this such an important site for a rich spot, spot to find so many fossils. And it was because during the Miocene epoch, it was an active rift valley. And so we wanted to highlight the valley, the Valle Spenades Basin there, but also the two mountain ranges that were being uplifted during that time. And while shaded relief, of course, is showing that, it wasn't really too dynamic for the space that we had. So we thought about possibly using plan oblique. And so that was a new uh, method for me to uh, iterate. So I did a little research for that and I'll provide some of those references at the end of this talk, but this is just a little cutaway from um, the journal article by Bernard Jenny and Tom Patterson talking about plan oblique. Um, and so we started doing some comparison and some contrasting here between just standard shaded relief with some hypsotins on it. And then on the right, you can see the plan oblique relief where the uh, while it's a planimetric base, the relief is kind of pushed up to the top of the map. And I think we we've, we decided pretty early on that that was a good method for us because it added some drama to the page and to the features without, without taking away um, the important information in the basin or the, the earlier, the coastal plain or the coastal range, excuse me. So after that, um, it was again, just some iterating. Uh, I used Natural Scene Designer to create this relief, this plan oblique relief. And so similar to making shaded relief, you'll want to kind of play around with the different z, the z factors, the extrusion of the DEM, and also the pitch, the camera angle. And um, we iterated that. We were playing around with the, the, the styling of the alluvial fans that we were, that we were displaying um, and other, the other map and page furniture. And then finally, we were able to um, add in some details to connect the map with the rest of the page layout. You'll see here um, the designers of this added in this really um, thin rule to the page. And so we incorporated that into our key feature, our key box. And again, here is the finished map on the page that it sits. And um, we were really happy with how it turned out. So I just wanted to uh, finish up with sharing with you guys some resources. And again, I'll be sharing this slide deck so you don't need to write this down, but um, there's um, always love to turn to cartographic perspectives to um, learn about any new mapping techniques for me. And so I, I referenced, there was an article there um, by Bernhard Jenny and Tom Patterson. There's, uh, they, uh, there's another article in the Cages Journal Tom has um, a whole page on his relief shading website about plan oblique. I found uh, this YouTube um, by somebody from Middlebury Geography, uh, an intro to natural scene designer, very helpful. And uh, my co-presenter in this session, John Nelson, also just recently published something about making plan oblique maps in ArcGIS Pro. So if you like to use that tool, that could be handy. So again, uh, thank you very much for indulging me in this quick little lightning talk and I'll be available on the Slack channel and around for the rest of the conference. And I hope you enjoy your conference. Thank you.